I will say, um, and I appreciate that introduction, that I'm, I'm here to honor Magic, and I can't think of a greater accomplishment, Magic, in my entire first year as commissioner than being selected as the person, along with President Clinton, to uh, introduce you tonight. Everyone in President Clinton talked a little bit about Magic's accomplishments on the court, the, the five championships, the three MVPs, but tonight, um, this is about all that Magic has accomplished off the court. And let me give, begin by saying, and, and I don't think Magic and I have ever had this conversation about how much you've inspired me personally, and which ultimately led to me being here today, um, long before I ever dreamed of, of even working at the NBA, long, let alone being commissioner. Um, it was February 1992, and I remember I had, I had worked all day that day. This is before I was at the NBA. It was a Sunday, and I had worked that day. And of course, the NBA All-Star Game was on um, in Orlando that year. And like a lot of you of my generation who are techno technologically savvy, I, I set my VCR that day when I left. And I got back and I prayed when I rewound that it would actually have recorded what I had. <laughs> and, um, and what I ended up seeing that night, and I remember it was late at night watching by myself at my apartment in New York, what turned out to be one of the me most memorable moments in basketball history. And, and, and I know I've never said this to you, but I remember what I saw watching by myself late that night on TV through my VCR um, brought me to tears. And, and of course, we all know three months earlier before that All-Star game, Magic had been diagnosed with HIV and had announced his retirement. But of course, because the fans loved you so much, they still voted you onto the All-Star team that year. And I remember it was not just your play on the court, but the reception that night by your fellow players, by the fans, by David Stern, the league. And it was a moment that, that truly transcended all of sports, let alone basketball. Um, we knew then as a nation we had a long way to go in dealing with the AIDS epidemic. But that was proof that night that compassion could overpower fear and the disease did not have to be the stigma that it had become. And also, what truly inspired me is I remember watching that night um, how inspired I was and how I, I understood for the first time as a sports fan, sports fan what a special place that the NBA was. And amazingly, the following summer, there I was working at the NBA, you know, fulfilling my own dream. So I want to thank you for inspiring me and for that all-Star performance, which of course you were also the MVP of that All-Star game in 1992. And, and for those of you in the, in the room who are old enough, you probably remember that when Magic was diagnosed with HIV in 1991, few people thought he would be here in 2014, let alone 1994. Uh, and frankly, HIV, AIDS was viewed back then as a dense death sentence. Irvin brought attention to HIV and AIDS, brought attention to the disease in a way that no one else possibly could have, demonstrating, in fact, that, of course, it was not a terminable illness while spending his days promoting research and education. Um, some of you may remember back then, shortly after he was diagnosed, he co-hosted a special on Nickelodeon where he answered difficult questions directly from children while well, comforting a frightened young girl who was also HIV positive, who is still alive today. You also wrote a book called What You Can Do to Avoid AIDS, and you spurred the NBA to take action in a number of ways, including public service announcements, education workshops, and partnerships with internationally known organizations like UNICEF, the Aaron Diamond AIDS Research Center, and the Kaiser Family Foundation. Magic later teamed up with Yao Ming to raise awareness through PSAs to literally hundreds of millions of people in China. You gave the sick courage to step forward and gave the rest of us the confidence that things would ultimately be okay. In fact, we'll never know how many lives you've saved over the past 23 years. To stay, today he stands alone above nearly all sports icons that I can think of not only because he's still here, but as President Clinton pointed out, thriving in so many ways. More than two decades after retiring from the NBA, you remain a unique force in public life, 
a role you embrace with relentless optimism. Since that painful announcement in November of 1991, Irvin has become the world's most visible AIDS advocate. Since that day, he's won an Olympic gold medal with the 1992 Dream Team, founded a non not-for-profit to invest in inner cities, funded a network of schools for disadvantaged youth, started a hugely successful business empire, coached the Lakers, bought the LA Dodgers, and of course the LA Sparks, my favorite, and played pickup basketball with President Obama. I don't know if you also played with Clinton, but I know you played with Obama. His greatest gift to all of us is what I'll call his unconditional inspiration. And you're so, we are so grateful that you've shared that with us. And that is why Irvin Magic Johnson is the winner of the 2014 Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year Legacy Award. Congratulations, Magic. <laughs>